Hi, let's get ready for our next flipping uh, video. We're going to be talking about dividing, still dividing, decimals. All right. Let's review a couple of things. All right. First of all, division is the opposite of multiplication. If multiplication is repeated addition, division is repeated subtraction. The quotient is the answer in a division problem. The dividend is the number being divided, and the divisor is the number doing the dividing. We also use a division symbol like this, but sometimes we also use the division slash to show that we're dividing. You could see something that looked like this. That would be 56 divided by 7. You don't see that a lot in fifth grade, but you do see it at times. So I want you to be aware of what that looks like. Here's the phrase to help you remember the order of the steps in a division problem. Does divide, McDonald's, multiply, serve, subtract, cheese, compare, burgers, bring down. Of course, if you've learned another phrase like the dumb monkey swing backwards, you can use that. If you feel confident with it, use it. I want you to use the method that works for you. That's what I'm here to make sure that you do. Now, dividing decimals is exactly like dividing whole numbers, but you have the decimal point that you want to make sure that you know where to put that in the answer. The decimal point does go in a certain place in the answer. Here's an example, 423 and 6 tenths divided by 3. All right, step one. Place the decimal point in the answer right above the decimal point in the dividend. So here it is here. I'm going to go ahead and put it here. That way I know it's going to be in the right place. All right, now I'm going to divide. Think, how many times could 4, can 4 be divided by 3? Well, one time. So we put our 1. Next, we multiply. 1 times 3 is 3. Next, subtract. Th 4 minus 3 is 1. Next, compare. Can 1 be divided by 3? That's like your safety net. No, 1 cannot be divided by 3. That answer should be no all the time. Then step five, bring down. Is there another number to bring down? Absolutely. It's right here. Bring this down. And then we start the steps all over again. To keep this going, I've put the saying up there along with the symbols. This is where we ended. We're going to start over again. And I'm going to put a little arrow there to show that we always start over. All right, how many times could 12 be divided by 3? I know that 12 could be divided by 3 four times. And there's my decimal, by the way. All right, 4 times 3, I'm multiplying. 4 times 3 is 12. Subtract. 12 minus 12 is 0. Compare. Can 0 be divided by 3? No, it's too small. Is there another number to bring down? Yes, bring this down. Start over. How many times can 3 be divided by 3? 1. All right, multiply. 1 times 3 is 3. Subtract. 0. Compare. Can 0 be divided by 3? No. Is there another number to bring down? Yes. Bring it all the way down. Now, because this is on the other side of the decimal point, you're going to put your answer on the other side of the decimal point. How many times can 6 be divided by 3? Two times. 2 times 3 is 6. Subtract 0. Compare 0 cannot be divided by 3. And is there anything left to bring down? No. So our answer or our quotient is 141 and 2 tenths. And we have to put that there or it's not going to be correct.
here's another example. This is 624 and 36 hundredths divided by 6. Here we go. Uh, 6 can be divided by 6 one time. 1 times 6 is 6. Subtract. 6 minus 6 is 0. Compare. 0, can it be divided by 6? No. Bring down the 2. Can 2 be divided by 6? No. So we put a 0 here because it cannot be divided by, by 6. Bring down the next number. 24. Can 24 be divided by 6? Yes. How many times? Okay, I know that 6 times 4 is 24, so I'm going to put a 4 here. 4 times 6 is 24. Subtract 0. Compare. Can 0 be divided by 6? No. Bring down my next number. Can 3 be divided by 6? No, it's too little. Put a zero here. Keep it there though. All right, we've already compared, so we bring down. All right, and we've got a six here. How many times can 36 be divided by six? Mm, if I do the math, let's try six. Six times six is 36. Subtract, we get zero. Compare, can zero be divided by six? No. Is there anything left to bring down? Nope, nothing left to bring down. So our answer is 104 and 6 hundredths. And there's our decimal point. You'll notice it is right above the decimal point there, right there. Remember, if you can't divide something like 2, 2 is not able to be divided, like whole numbers, by 6. I'm going to put a 0 here. I will put a 0 here. And same thing that happened here. Well, what if you divide whole numbers and there's a remainder? And you probably heard somebody say, well, you can make that into a decimal. Can you represent it as a decimal? Yes, you really can. And here's how. You'll divide like normal first. Uh, 1 cannot be divided by 5, but 12 could be divided by 5 two times. 2 times 5 is 10. Subtract 2. Can 2 be divided by 5? No. So I'm going to bring down my next number, and it's 27. Alright, so I'll start all over again. How many times can 27 be divided by 5? Five? 5 times. 5 times 5 is 25. Subtract 2. <clears throat> compare. Can 2 be divided by 5? No. Now here's where you'd normally say, okay, there's nothing left to bring down. I'm going to make this into a remainder, but remember we can make it into a decimal. And here's how we do it. We have nothing left to bring down, so we are going to put a decimal here and a zero. Now you may say, but why did you do that? Well, it's a placeholder. It's not going to add value to 127. This is still 127. Now can I bring something down? Absolutely. And you probably notice that I put the decimal up here in the quotient area. Notice it is right above where the decimal is here. Now start over. Can I, how many times can 20 be divided by 5? 4 times. Put my 4. 4 times 5 is 20. Subtract. Zero. Can zero be divided by five? No, I'm, that looks good. Is there anything left to bring down? No. And you don't need to put another zero here. We've divided everything out. So my quotient or my answer would be 25 and 4 tenths. And that's how you would represent that as a decimal. You wouldn't put remainder two. You would add a zero after a decimal point. Here are your practice problems for tonight. Please show your work, either on the back or on a separate sheet of notebook paper. Here is A, B, and C. Now this one is an example like this. I'd like for you to show this remainder, and there will be a remainder. Show it as a decimal. Work it out. If you're not sure how to do it, go back and look at this frame again. Replay it again so you can see what to do. 
And if you have any questions, please let me know tomorrow. Please let me know tomorrow because some of you aren't saying anything. You're just sitting there and keeping it to yourself. And I'd love to be able to help you. Okay? Thanks.